Thank you for tuning in to Inside Taiwan. I'm Melvin Tan. On the 30th, Premier Wu Dunyi and high-ranking economic and finance officials engaged in a breakfast meeting with industry representatives. While the representatives expressed cautious optimism about the global economy, they also provided many recommendations for the government. Wu promised to pass the recommendations on to President Ma Ying-jeou in the hopes of maintaining an economic growth rate of 4 percent next year. During a breakfast meeting with Premier Wu Dunyi and other senior government officials, industry representatives expressed confidence in Taiwan's overall economy but urged the government to provide assistance to export-focused industries. The Council for Economic Planning and Development will propose short- and long-term plans for stimulating the economy to maintain an economic growth rate of 4 percent next year, and Wu also said that he would report on ideas exchanged during the meeting to President President Ma Ying-jeou. Following the meeting, the industry representatives praised Wu for directly responding to their questions and reservations on development plans for the five special municipalities, future development of the petrochemical industry, stimulation of domestic demand through urban renewal plans, and implementation of ECFA-related policies. President Ma Ying-jeou visited Dongshi, the biggest persimmon production site on central Taiwan, and got first-hand pricing information from farmers. Some farmers complained to the president that the recent negative campaign of the DPP was misleading and resulted in slow sales and price drop by nearly 20 percent. However, DPP vice presidential candidate Su Jiaquan went to the same site one step ahead of the president, saying that there are various types of persimmons and urged the government to stop ignoring the fact of varied persimmon types and take care of farmers of all types. President Ma personally visited Dongshi, the major production site of persimmons in central Taiwan, as he wanted to know whether or not there are persimmons sold at $280 per caddy. Some farmers took the opportunity to complain to the president, saying that the publicity of cheap persimmons has cut the sales by half, even though that it is now the harvest season. There are various types of persimmons displayed on the table, and they are of different tiers. Premium persimmons are priced at between $80 to $180 per caddy, while the less quality ones are also priced between $15 to $20. According to farmers, the production and marketing costs are at least $70 per caddy, and it is impossible to see persimmons sold at $20 per caddy. President Ma criticized his opponents for being irresponsible for such negative campaign and urged them to stop spreading such rumor. The president also purchased 5,000 kilograms of persimmons himself. In the morning of the same day, DPP vice presidential candidate Su Jiaquan checked out pricing of the fruit in Dongshi. Former Dongshi chief says the foreign type of sweet persimmons is more expensive for its higher cost and local ones are far less priced. Su stressed that the government should take care of farmers of all crops and tiers, while persimmon growers found themselves involuntarily involved in the political dispute over fruit pricing. DPP presidential candidate Tsai Ing-wen has expressed her regret over any possible confusion stemming from a calendar produced by her party in which the picture of persimmon was incorrectly stated. Shortly after, Tsai dismissed the incident, saying the focus should be on problems in agricultural production and marketing instead of the mistake. In other news, when meeting with social care organizations, Tsai said that if elected, she will allocate budget of 40 billion NT dollars over the course of the four years towards the creation of a long-term care system. DPP presidential candidate Tsai Ing-wen was forced to respond to her party's inaccurate handling of a calendar featuring persimmons, in which they were found to have incorrectly quoted the price of the fruit. She expressed her regret over any possible confusion that resulted and said the focus should be on agricultural production and marketing techniques. Tsai also took the time recently to meet with several social care groups where she discussed the issue of long-term care. She promised that if elected, she would create a 40 billion NT dollar budget over four years towards a comprehensive long-term care system, which would incorporate the work of these social care organizations, the community and living caretakers. Tsai also promised that a specific government entity would be set up to oversee the system as well as other societal welfare issues, which would help to reduce the time needed to set up the system. 
Currently, there are about 108,000 people over the age of 65 in Yunlin County, or about 15% of the total population. Yunlin County ranks second in terms of the number of citizens of senior age due to many working population leaving the county in search of work, as well as the large area of the county and the underdeveloped transport system. And this has resulted in many senior citizens lacking long-term care. Thus, the local government and the communities are working together to set up a long-term care system. And some societal groups have suggested strengthening the live-in caretaker system, including training more living caretakers. Mr. Joe is 76 and usually lives alone. His mobility is not too good, and so he has to depend on caretakers for everything requiring movement, from cleaning his house to eating meals. According to the Yunling Elderly Long-Term Care Association, there are close to 3,000 persons in Yunling County, like Mr. Zhou, senior citizens who live alone. Their problems are hampered by the outflow of young people who seek work outside the county, as well as their remote locations, which are not easily accessible by transportation. Thus, many are not receiving the medical care that they need and have to rely on caretakers coming to their homes to survive. However, there is a shortage of caretakers at the moment. To remedy this problem, the local government has reached out to local communities, hoping that they can handle the functions of long-term care. Societal groups say that the aging of the population is a nationwide problem, but since Yuling depends on agriculture to survive, it receives less independent sources of aid than other counties and cities. Thus, they hope the central government will not only take action to help senior citizens who suffer from problems of mobility or dementia, but also allot resources to help senior citizens in general. According to the Construction and Planning Agency's quarterly housing demand survey, the housing to income ratio rose from 9 in the second quarter to a record of 9.2 times in the third quarter. Although Taipei City's ratio fell from last quarter's record 16.2 to 14.3, other regions of Taiwan experienced an increase in housing to income ratio. How has the luxury tax, which was launched in June, affected Taiwan's housing market? According to Construction and Planning Agency statistics, the number of registered property transactions in Taipei City fell by 21 percent from the second quarter to the third quarter. While the number of transactions declined, the average per ping price of properties increased by 510,000 NT. At the same time, Taiwan's overall housing to income ratio in the third Third quarter reached a new high of 9.2 compared to 9 in the previous period. Taipei City's housing to income ratio fell from the second quarter's record 16.2 to 14.3, but the average payment to income ratio hit 46.6 percent. The survey also revealed that Taipei City had the highest short-term real estate investment gain of 64 percent. Experts say that this is evidence of the limited effect of the luxury tax and that the housing market will be affected in the short term by the upcoming elections and global economy.